Hey guys, it's Charan and welcome back to System Design Concepts for Beginners. This is video number three in the series and today we're going to talk about the Cap Theorem. The Cap Theorem is a well-known principle in distributed systems. It states that a distributed data store can only provide at most two of the following three properties consistency, availability, and partition tolerance. It can never simultaneously provide all three. And as with most other things, the easiest way to understand this theorem is with an example. Say we have these two database nodes. The two nodes contain a duplicate copy of the same data, and they communicate with each other over the network. Each node can serve read requests, and it can also serve write requests, which will then be replicated to the other node. Now, I want to actually start with the P in CAP. The P stands for partition tolerance. The word partition here refers to a network partition, which is a break in communication between the nodes. Say these two nodes are up and running, but they can no longer communicate with each other. Basically, the system was partitioned into two non-communicating parts. Tolerating this partition means that the system continues to function correctly despite this failure. And I assume you already know what availability and consistency are because, of course, you've watched my two previous videos on this concept. But just as a reminder, let's quickly write the definitions. The consistency under the CAP theorem refers to the consistency of data across nodes. A read request to any node should always return the most up-to-date value. And if it can't do that, it should fail and return an error. It should never return stale or inconsistent data. The guarantee of availability means that every request for data will have to return a valid response. It will not fail, it will not return an error, it might return stale or inconsistent values, but it will return something. According to the CAP theorem, a distributed system can only deliver two of these three properties. A system can be CP, which means it delivers consistency and partition tolerance while sacrificing to some extent its availability. When a partition happens, the system will either shut down and refuse all incoming requests, or at the very least, it will limit the type of operations it accepts until the partition is resolved. For example, in this simple setup, if we were to allow update requests during a network failure, the new state would not be able to replicate to the other node, right? Because the nodes can't communicate with each other. This will cause subsequent reads to return inconsistent values. So in order to preserve consistency, we would have to block all updates during communication breaks. We will just have to accept that the system will be unavailable during partitions. Alternatively, the system can be AP, available and partition tolerant. It means that when a partition happens, the two parts will remain available and continue to serve requests. Allowing the nodes to operate independently in this way and possibly update state will cause an inconsistency in data and some reads might return all the values. But of course we don't completely throw consistency out the window. When the partition is resolved, the database will resync all the nodes back to a consistent state. The third option is a bit controversial and somewhat confusing. CA, a system that is consistent and available. A database can be consistent and available as long as the nodes can communicate with each other, meaning it cannot tolerate network partitions, thus forfeiting the P in CAP. And since a CA system cannot work properly under partitions, it becomes an unrealistic option, right? Because network partitions are unavoidable. Designing your system based on the assumption that network messages will never be dropped is optimistic at best, possibly even delusional. There's a good article on why you can't actually sacrifice partition tolerance. It's pretty old, but I think it still holds. I'll put a link in the description. I'll also add a link to an article from Professor Eric Brewer himself, the guy that came up with the CAP theorem, where among other things, he clarifies some of the confusion around this two out of three approach. The TLDR of this section is that the CAP theorem is not really about choosing any two options out of the three, but really your choices between availability and consistency. In other words, partition tolerance is a given, and when a partition happens, will you choose to sacrifice availability by refusing requests, or will you choose to sacrifice consistency by letting the parts operate independently and resyncing once communication is restored? There's also a kind of complementary theorem called uh, PACELC. Maybe there's a way to pronounce this as a word, I don't know. But anyways, just like Boris Cap theorem, it states that if there is a partition, we must trade off between availability and consistency, but then it goes further and explains what should happen in a normal state when there isn't a partition. 
So the E is for else, when there is no partition. In that case, the system chooses to minimize latency or provide consistency, but not both. The trade-off between latency and consistency is something that I talked about in the previous video, but again, it comes down to having to block requests and wait until a consistent state is restored. Lastly, I want to stress again that these concepts are not binary, but continuous. You don't choose between zero availability or zero consistency, but rather between a reduced level of availability versus a reduced level of consistency. There is a trade-off between them, but you never want to forfeit either of them completely. Okay, so that is it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.